right, welcome to the fourth and final game of the evening. Up this time is Twin Breaker, a Sacred Symbols adventure. Uh, it's another Brick Breaker. Um, apparently, this one is very, very plot driven. Like, yeah, go uh, I, yeah, it, it's it's honestly kind of weird. Uh, well, uh, th we got the Nintendo Switch version of this game, so it falls to the Gollics to review this uh, particular title. Uh, so over to you. So when you load up this game, you get, like, a whole bunch of... It's not literally 20, but it's, like, a 10 or so uh, slides of sci-fi setup of humanity has moved to space, the humans, humans that didn't move to space had a world war, the U.S. stayed out of it, something, something. There were generation ships that got sent out, but they all disappeared. Uh, then one of them reappeared. Uh, there's a fucking wormhole around Mercury that it came back through, and now we're sending two specialized ships uh, through... Uh, the wormhole to inspect what happened on the other side um, as the setup for why uh, we're doing block breaking because those two ships are block breaker paddles and their special weapon is a block breaker ball. Not and that when you get to the to... Yeah, and when you get to the other side, uh, there are uh, obstacles and hazards that are surprisingly blocks. So I'll note not that unusual for this genre. I mean, Arkanoid was a ship-based uh, brick breaker. Like, the yeah, boss. Yeah, you don't unlock fucking... Uh, you don't unlock fucking relics of, like, writing and shit uh, for achieving a certain score in every level of Arkanoid. No, I'd imagine if Arkanoid could have done that back in the day, they might have done that. For stage one, yeah, for, for doing stage one, you unlock newspaper op-ed. And so what is the end goal? These so-called generation ships are sending thousands on voluntary suicide missions with vague hopes of finding something out there in the endless void of space with no hope of returning to Earth, of reuniting with loved ones, of seeing any fruits from their ultimate sacrifice. Why aren't we more concerned about what we're asking these people to do? What is the point? Hmm. So there are 40 levels of the actual game, which are just destroy all bricks, and some of them are boss fights, I imagine. Um, I did not get to the first boss fight, because uh, the brick breaking gets hard. But uh, there's also a marathon mode, which is just all of the levels in a row, with uh, or see how far you get. Um, with You have, I think, three hearts... To start with, and each time you lose a, you lose your last ball on screen because one of the power ups is multi ball. Uh, you lose a heart. Mm -hmm. You can also, if you die, or you run out of hearts, you can buy another heart with a hundred points from your score, which will. You could do that as many points as you have, which will let, probably let you complete the levels, but might knock your score down so low that you don't unlock the uh, data logs. There is a hockey mode, which is you versus boss characters without the whole fancy stage setup. There's random mode, which is just uh, random random stage setups that you have to deal with. There's a shooter mode, which is uh, both of your pods have the shooter power up permanently. Uh, and there are further shooter power ups that can increase your rate of fire. And it's kind of like a space shooter, except uh, they're blocks that you're that you're uh, shooting. A lot of them are aligned vertically in later stages and in random mode and in shooter mode, which makes them harder to hit. There's catcher mode, which drops the money slash score power up and the enemies, because one of the quote unquote power ups is just a bug shaped enemy that like shrinks your paddle and slows you down for a little while. There's a boss rush mode, which is the actual boss stages in a row. And the achievement room is where you go to look at your newspaper op-ed, scientific journal, requisition order from Generation Ship, NASA bioethics study, 
message from Catholic Pope Theodore the Third. Mm. <laughs> um, you are initially, and for a lot of the game, well, the, uh, some of what I've gotten has gotten from that I got further in boss rush mode than I did in the other ones, which is that while the first boss, you are still, con as previously, controlling one paddle on the left side of the screen and one paddle on the right side of the screen because you have two ships. And with your ships, you get to choose uh, which ship launches the ball whenever you lose a ball, which is nice. Um, but then the second one is a side-scrolling looking thing. So you only have one pod and it's on the left side of the screen and the boss is on the right. And then the third, and possibly beyond that, uh, you have four paddles, um, which uh, is interesting because um, you only have two sticks, but you control left and right, basically, uh, with left and right on the sticks or D-pad, I guess. Although, uh, on the Switch, the uh, right D-pad is, is the buttons, and... Uh, you do need to hit one of those buttons to launch the ball, so... Um, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, so yeah, some of the stages are side to side, too. Um, so I don't know how that goes through progression in the story. I didn't get past the first zone in the story, so I don't know if it's by zone or if they just start doing weird stuff at a certain point. Um, sorry, I'm playing as I'm talking to to keep it fresh. Um, so yeah, that's more or less it. There's a lot of text about your characters figuring like every few stages you'll get text from your characters talking about what they're figuring out or trying to figure out what's going on um i this has to be one of the more interesting scenarios i've seen for delivering your sci-fi story um mm -hmm. i don't know if there are other sacred symbols adventures um one of the things th uh, the bricks do drop power-ups, and they're pretty much your usual power-ups and power-downs. Shrink and grow your thing. Put a wall around the bottom of the screen for a little while. Uh, give you guns. Increase or decrease the ball size. Multi-ball. Uh, make the ball either slower and break through things or faster and break through things more. The bricks are need to be hit up to five times to break them um, depending on the individual brick and they're color coded and Roman numerals although it's a little bit tricky to just see the Roman numerals because they're kind of small um, any further questions or any uh, that any questions that you guys have to think of because I'm not sure exactly what I, even on the regular stuff though you are controlling a paddle on the left side of the screen and a paddle on the right side of the screen, which is a little bit tricky because you kind of have to be in two play places at once. Or I guess you could also uh, give a friend one of the one of your Joy Cons on the Switch version. Mm -hmm. Does it have any like two player stuff, or is it just you can give a friend a Joy Con if you want or don't? Uh, I didn't see any dedicated two player mode, but you might be able to. Certainly, it's not hard to give your other player one of the Joy-Cons. The only thing is uh, that you are each in control of, when it comes to launching the ball, you are each in control of the button that gives you the ball. So. Fun. Play with a friend who doesn't want to fuck with you. <laughs> so don't play with this with Ogre. Got it. Th that was actually the pre-censored version of that sentence, yes. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah it's it's the boss fights are kind of interesting because the boss has a certain number of hit points and like in hockey mode you uh when you break the boss uh you can like every time the ball bounces off it uh it takes a point of damage and they just kind of are away for a while in hockey mode, and you can just score points freely, although you really only have time for one or two points. Um, 
also note that in hockey mode, there are still like obstacles in the middle of the screen. You don't just have, it's not just Pong. Or like air hockey or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the bosses are, so it's, it's an interesting game. I'm not, uh, I would need more practice to get, uh, actually good at it, but. Um, cause I didn't have super long to play with it. I was very busy this weekend. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, if that sounds at all appealing to you, I rec- I actually kind of recommend it just as a, uh, curiosity, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's tricky to. I mean, even if I knew more of the plot, I wouldn't be telling too much. Oh, you do also have one other power that I fucking keep forgetting about, which is that uh, after you score a certain number of points or rebounds, you can press your shoulder button or the shoulder button on a Joy-Con to send that respective Joy-Con's uh, paddle. Like, not physically shoot it forward, but basically do a version of the fucking laser sword from Zelda. <laughs> where you shoot an image of it forward that you can ba- that will bounce the ball off of it. Hmm. So you can do that to uh, get the ball to bounce to cause bounces up higher than you can actually get your ball up to. So again, some interesting mechanics for a ball breaker, even aside from or from a block breaker, even aside from the fact that there's uh, a lot of story here, which is still weird. <laughs> Does this have like actual physics or is it like the ball rotates like 45 degrees or something whenever it hits something? Uh, I believe it has standard breakout physics, which means that uh, it mostly matters where on the paddle you hit the ball. Mm. I think. Yeah, Although, you don't have to worry about that. If you are moving the ball side to side, that does give it a little bit more uh, swing in that direction. Mm. All right. In terms of pricing, uh, in terms of pricing, this game clocks in at ten dollars nine ninety nine across all platforms. Mm -hmm. That's the price. How much? Uh, Nine ninety nine, ten dollars. Eh, that's a little higher than I'd probably go for it, but. Um, if you could get it on sale, it's probably actually a decent deal, and if not, I mean, it's not terrible. Okay, um, anything else on Twin Breaker? Uh, not really. Okay, so, uh, that'll about wrap it up for this review session of the week ahead. I suppose, first off, apologies for last Wednesday, uh, the episode of last news desk on the left did uh, <laughs> didn't go out because of well it occurred but we weren't recording because we're dumb well it, it's more that was max um, goof mm-hmm. like, let's be clear yeah, that, that we've was been normal. having some trouble with the go live button versus uh... right. But um, point is, uh, we didn't miss anything because of scheduling. Uh, that was more the technology didn't work. Like, but anyway, it's a shame so we had a good show, and I got a laugh that everybody was had to admit that they laughed at. So, rest in peace, Joe. Clearly, the never universe be... is conspiring against me. Yeah, but can never be proven because we don't have uh, recorded evidence anymore. Right. So, so. you, you, the discerning <laughs> audience, need to take my word for it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Golok's kind of uh, sus. <laughs> now, now, children. <laughs> anyway, um, on Wednesday, November 4th, we will be welcoming uh, Nathan Fouts uh, of Mommy's Best Games. Like, uh, Let's see. Uh, they are the development studio uh, and publisher behind the recent... A game, Pig Eat Ball, that is an actual game. But we'll be talking about their latest release, an upgraded version of their shmup, uh, Shoot One Up, called, well, uh, Shmoop, uh, Shoot One Up DX, which just released on the Nintendo Switch 
and is heading to the Xbox One in December. Uh, and we will, by hell or high water, we're having a Last News Desk on the Left <laughs> show on Wednesday. Because <laughs> that's going to be the post-election show. Like, so we're going to have shit to talk about <laughs> one way or the other. God, I hope so. <laughs> I'm like, we just want it to be the one way, and oh god, not the other. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Minor addendum on Twin Breaker, since I just, as we were talking, managed to get past the tenth stage, which was a boss fight. I can confirm yeah. that, yes, as I suspected, there are probably boss fights every ten stages, and the format changes somewhat every ten stages. So, okay. the second ten stages are horizontal, the third ten stages are going to be uh, four directional. Gotcha. And I still don't know um, what the last chunk is. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to make more progress. Right. Um, anyway, uh, no Friday show this week. Uh, um, so that is what we got planned. And hopefully this time the technology will agree. Um, also worth noting, no, we're not doing anything for election day. None of our nerves will be um, all that functional, mm -hmm. I imagine. Oh, God. Anyway, until Wednesday, I shall wish you good gaming. <laughs>